Yeah, years ago, we identified a project to bring clean, renewable energy to New England. We, we took into account the recommendations of regulatory agencies, environmental leaders, and local communities. The corridor will create and is already creating hundreds of good jobs. It will bring property tax relief to Lewiston and dozens of community along the corridor. It will connect rural communities to broadband and it will help us meet our climate goals. This is a good deal for Maine. Now, with this project already underway, we have a question one, badly written retroactive law that will harm not just clean energy projects, but future projects. The Bangor Daily News said, if question one passes, we'll miss an opportunity to make our energy cleaner and send a message that Maine is not welcome to the investments infrastructure needed to do this essential work. I hope you'll join me in voting no on question one. Thank you, Thorne Dickinson. Next, also for no on one, is Ben Dudley, director of Mainers for Clean Energy Jobs. Thank you, Pat, for this opportunity uh, this evening. The choice before Maine voters is clear. Do we want to lead on clean energy, creating hundreds of new jobs with significant new benefits for local communities? Or do we want to pass far-reaching, dangerous, and retroactive laws that were written by and for the gas industry? I'd like to underline that the Clean Energy Corridor has received exhaustive scrutiny from the public agencies established to provide impartial, expert fact-finding. Question one, on the other hand, was written behind closed doors by oil and gas lobbyists with no public input, no careful independent scrutiny of unintended consequences. In trying to stop the development of the clean energy infrastructure, they created a dangerous, far-reaching, and very confusing question with impacts that are impossible to foresee. So if you're confused by question one, you're not alone. If these carbon polluters succeed, their industry stands to save a billion dollars. And that's at the expense of ratepayers across New England, including right here in Maine. If they succeed, the precedent will be set um, I'm sorry, for a referendum to, process to be abused in the future in this way. Thank you, Ben Dudley. And representing Yes on One, former state senator Tom Saviello. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thanks for doing this. First of all, let me point out that there will only be 38 jobs after this project is completed. In my area, the biomass industry will be gone. They talk about climate change. I would note to all of you, if you look at the governor's climate change report, nowhere in there is mentioned the New England Clean Energy Collect. When you go to the polls, ask yourself, are the pennies that we're going to get for tearing up our state so good for a foreign country, which is Hydro-Quebec, will make $41 million a month? And a foreign business, Iberdrola, who owns Central Maine Power, will make $5 million a month, as Maine acts as an extension cord for Massachusetts. Last time I checked, we stopped being a colony for Massachusetts in 1820. This is a bad deal for Maine. Vote yes on November 2nd. And finally, Adam Cody, who is also for Yes on One. He's an attorney representing the campaign. Thanks, Pat. This is a terrible deal for Maine for many reasons. The first, it goes through the Upper Kennebec region, which is an incredibly important region for the state of Maine. CMP likes to talk a lot about the benefits of this project. They mention broadband, they mention property taxes, electric vehicles, heat pumps, and all of that. But the fact is, an independent study on this said the average Maine ratepayer will Adam receive Cody, nine I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off because we had a, a technical problem. We didn't hear your entire statement, so I want you to start again, please. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Here's no a problem. Um, all right. So uh, this project is a terrible deal for Maine for many reasons. It goes through the Upper Kennebec region, which is incredibly important environmentally for the state of Maine. CMP likes to talk about all the benefits we're going to receive from this. They talk about broadband. They talk about heat pumps, electric vehicles. The fact is, an independent study said the average Mainer will receive nine cents of benefits per month on this, nine pennies. That's not a lot, whereas they're making billions of dollars on this, CMP and Hydro-Quebec. They've done a lot to try to confuse people on this. CMP actually recently sent out a flyer saying this is going to affect people's gun rights, Second Amendment rights. They've been doing this all over the place, and it's not accurate. The retroactive provisions are to apply to CMP because they entered into an illegal lease. It's that simple. And CMP cannot be trusted to handle this project. They're the worst rated utility in America right now. They can't handle your bills, and they can't even handle the outages. We are going to have more outages if this happens because they will have to take care of that line before they take care of ours. I'd encourage you to vote yes on one. Thank you.